for a practical example, and I'll say practical in air quotes there. Um, so here I'm going to start to um, graph the following function. So I think some very important things to to pick pick out are what is the degree of the equation? That is very important for the uh, sh overall shape of the graph. Well, the degree of the equation is the highest exponent. Now, the highest exponent when it's in that general form. So what do we have to do? This is in factored form. We have to multiply these all out. If we multiplied all these out, all out what is the highest exponent? Well, here it would be x to the power of 1. Now, this term would be factored, or I mean raised to the power of 3, so it would be x to the power of 3 x to the power of 2. So x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2. We add the exponents, so that'd be a 6 degree equation. Now, it really doesn't make it that much more difficult to graph. A really important item to pick out, though, is that the leading coefficient is negative 1. So the leading coefficient is negative 1, and the reason for that, now it doesn't matter if it's 1, 2, or 7, it really matters if it's negative, because that will determine our end behaviors. It's negative 1 because there's a negative in front here, so that's really a, there's a really hidden negative 1 hiding. So if we have a 6 degree equation, and our leading coefficient is negative 1, it means that our n behaviors are going to be overall an even degree is, is has the same behaviors as a parabola. When that leading coefficient is negative, it over, or overall opens downwards. So now I'm going to start picking out my zeros. So this factor has a multiplicity of 1, or the exponent is 1, and we're going to say, when is this factor equal to 0? So this is my single 0, when x is equal to 1. This is degree 3. This factor, a multiplicity of 3. When is this factor? Well, this is going to be a triple 0, because it's the exponent 3. When is this factor equal to 0? When x is negative 2. When is this factor equal to 0? Now this factor is raised to the exponent 2, so this will be our double 0. When we have a double 0 at 0. I always... So, I always like to just do this for myself, because otherwise I'm going to mess it up. Um, a single 0 I'm going to denote as a dot. A double 0 I'm going to denote as a box and a triple zero, a triangle. It doesn't matter what shape you use. It just makes you aware that you have to be careful. So I have a single zero at one, so I'm going to put one. I have a single zero there, a nice dot, a double zero at zero, so I'm going to put a square there. So just be careful that I have to bounce off the x-intercept at a double zero. A triple zero is at negative two, so it's over there. So I'm going to put negative 2, 1, 0, 2, and I'm not going to label my y's because this kind of gets crazy. Please graph this with Desmos after uh, to see the overall shape. Now, very simply, I'm going to use the end behaviors. So this is a triple zero. I know from my end behaviors that my graph is going to be increasing goes through that triple zero, so it has to flatten out and then go through the x-axis. So I'm going to put a little arrow to indicate that it's continuous going down. Now I have to hit this. We may recognize that we have a double zero at zero. So I have to, see I'll try to position my hand so you can see, I have to hit this zero and bounce off. Boing! At a double zero, it doesn't go through this zero. So I'm a little bit above the x-axis now. And this is my single zero. What do I have to do with a single zero? It just goes straight through. 
So that is a sketch of the graph. It's sort of meshing together the degrees, the leading coefficient, which make up the end behaviors, and then putting together what the zeros look like. Let's do another example. So perhaps I can go a little bit quicker through this example. I'm going to say here, there, I'm going to graph this function. I see that there are three factors. I am going to simply put one there to remind me that it's a single zero. This is going to be a double zero, so I know that I have a double zero when it, this factor is equal to zero. Negative one, a single zero when this factor is zero, so that occurs when x is two. A double zero when x is, when this factor is zero, and that is four. Now it's a double zero because my exponent's two. What I recognize here, I'm just gonna write degree, my degree of my equation is 5. Simply add the exponents. If I were to multiply this out, would the leading coefficient be positive or negative? So now I'm just going to drop that whole argument. What is it? And I'm just going to put positive. It is positive one, but I'm going to put positive one. So I have a single 0 at 2. So a single 0 at 2. So I'm going to put a round by the way, this is just for me, round, uh, the round dot. A double zero, I'm going to put that as a square. So I have a two double zeros, one at negative one, which is over here, one at four. So here, better label my axis correctly, because otherwise I'm going to be receiving a half mark deduction. And I'm going to use an odd degree with a positive leading coefficient Reminds me of odd degree, odd. Oh, that's a linear function. There, the leading coefficient. Overall, this will have a left hand and right hand side behavior of um, positive slope. So I know from my left hand and right hand side behavior, it's much more steep than what I'm actually drawing, is that my function's increasing and it's approaching a zero. Since this is a double zero, it bounces off the x axis. Now, if you're adventurous, by all means, you can figure out the y-intercept by plugging in x is equal to 0. But I don't care. By the way, the y-intercept, if I take a quick look at that, is negative 8. But regardless. Um, so my function is just right here. It's, it's below the x-axis. Now, it has to go through this 0. So I'm going to turn around this bus and go through that single 0 just like that. Now, here's a double zero. So I know that if I'm above the x-axis and I have to hit the double zero, my function just simply bounces off. And overall, this is a pretty good sketch of my function. The reason why I'm not going into great detail is because the branch of, uh, the branch of mathematics of calculus really does a great job of polynomials. Here's the, what the shape is. Here's the fundamental um, sketch of it. Last example, and then you're free on your way. Um, here, I'm going to graph this function. So you may want to press pause and graph it by yourself. Okay, I'm glad you're joining me again. So what I know is my degree here is I have a degree 6. My leading coefficient is negative. So overall, a de even degree, now what's important, 6 is even, an even degree, it's going to behave like a parabola. When my coefficient is negative, my graph is going to be downward open. I have, I'm going to look at my function here. I have a quadruple 0. Wow. When is this factor equal to 0? When x is equal to negative 1. When is this factor, now this factor is going to be a double zero because they're the exponent. When is this factor equal to zero? At zero. Now this is going to be a super strange graph in real life, but thankfully we are just making a sketch of it. So I know that my graph has this shape. So my left hand side behavior, um, so at zero is a double zero. 
So I know that when I hit my graph, it's going to bounce off. Oh, yikes. I'm sorry. I made a mistake there. Sort of. Maybe. We'll see. I forgot to make my quadruple zero. So that's my quadruple zero. Yikes. All right. Let's start anew then. I have my left hand and right hand side behaviors. So I know that my graph is increasing as it hits this quadruple zero. Now, how does a quadruple zero behave? It behaves very similar to a double zero. The only thing that is different is a little bit flatter. No math teacher in their right mind in grade 11 is going to take off points if on flatness for a quadruple zero. But then, when we're below the x-axis, we need to hit this double zero. So this graph just rebounds off that double zero and opens downward. So um, I made a slight error there. That's what this graph looks like. I hope you'll enjoy it. I know it's a lot of information that I'm throwing at you, but if you're able to piece it together, polynomial functions are quite fun. I hope you enjoy.